thank you for the opportunity to speak today and thank you to the sponsors. Um, I just want to give you an overview of Iveric Bio and give you a little bit of information about our pipeline. Here's our forward-looking statements. Uh, we are a publicly traded company. So our goal at Iveric Bio is to become a leader in gene therapy for orphan inherited retinal diseases. Uh, we've built a strong and broad pipeline of six different programs. We're focused on execution right now. IND enabling studies, CMC is in place, and clinical trial initiations are on track for next year and the following year. Our business development outreach continues to bring in additional programs into our pipeline. We have a strong cash position and we are well capitalized. As we look at our pipeline here, our first two assets, IC100 for Rhodopsin mediated ADRP, autosomal dominant retinitis pigmentosa, and IC200 for best one inherited retinal diseases, uh, plan to be in the clinic next year and the following year. This is followed on by our mini gene programs, which I'll talk to you about in LCA10, Stargardt disease, and USH2A related inherited retinal diseases, and an additional program in AAV gene delivery technology. There are really three things that we looked at as we brought in these programs into our pipeline. One is compelling science and the ability to be first in class and potentially best in class. High unmet medical need and a significant orphan patient populations. These were all orphan diseases, but we looked at diseases where we could have uh, the most effect. And according to that, we really look at a multi-billion dollar, the potential for a multi-billion dollar cumulative net sales potential, assuming our programs are successful. We've developed strong collaborations with leading academic gene therapy centers of excellence, including University of Pennsylvania, University of Florida, which our first two programs were licensed from. And we continually utilize these as our scientific horsepower. Uh, it, our, our mini gene programs were licensed from the University of Massachusetts Medical School and the Hooray Gene Therapy Center. In terms of our manufacturing strategy, uh, we have a manufacturing relationship with Catalan Paragon Gene Therapy, uh, who has proven expertise in the manufacturing of gene therapies. This incorporates both of our two main programs for IND enabling TOC studies as well as GMP AAV vector for our phase one, two studies. Just a little bit more information on our manufacturing program. Um, this is a suspension culture process, scalable, straightforward uh, transfer from GMP into the GMP process. Our uh, process development and IND enabling lots were manufactured at scale. This is a de-risking approach that we've utilized um, to predict the yield and quality for our clinical lots. And our goal is really to minimize manufacturing changes from our tox to our phase one into commercial. Talk to you a little bit about IC100, which is rhodopsin mediated autosomal dominant retinitis pigmentosa. RP, or retinitis pigmentosa, is the most prevalent inherited retinal dystrophy. Uh, bilateral degeneration of rod and cone photoreceptors leading to progressive visual impairment. ADRP is the most common autosomal dominant retinal disease with more than 150 rhodopsin gene mutations. And the rhodopsin is actually toxic. Our IC100 vector is an AEV25. It's an AEV5 capsid with type 2 terminal repeats. And the elegant thing about this vector is you'll see the shRNA in the capsid. And this actually knocks down the mutated toxic rhodopsin. And then the gene of interest then produces the healthy wild type rhodopsin. IC100 is potentially best in class, no clinical stage gene therapy competition. It's a mutation independent strategy, a knockdown and replacement with a single AAV vector, proof of concept in two animal models, including a large animal disease, uh, canine disease model, uh, which is a nat naturally occurring model, and long-term preservation of retinal anatomy and function has been shown, which I'll show you in a minute. We have a clear path to IND. We've had our pre-IND meeting um, IND enabling activities are ongoing, as well as natural history, and we have our CMC strategy in place. So in terms of the proof of concept for this program, uh, we've shown it in, in both dogs and mice, uh, but interestingly, this, this canine model, a naturally occurring disease model in canines, you could clearly see 
the treatment area here where the yellow and, and increasing the um, brightness of the color indicates thickness of the retina. Um, so in the treatment area here, we show photoreceptor rescue, where in the blue area, the, the photoreceptors have died off. Further to that, we look at the retinal thickness. If we look at the top line um, showing the uh, preservation of retinal anatomy, if we look at the treated area, the retina is, is thick and full, and then you go across to the untreated area where it has died out. Uh, and you could clearly see this where the drug was administered in the subretinal bleb in the transition zone in the middle. In addition to the anatomy, we showed rescue of function as well in the ERGs at the bottom. Our next program for best one is best one related inherited retinal diseases. This is an AEV2. Um, best is it's an orphan inherited retinal disease caused by mutations in the best one gene. Uh, the best one gene helps regulate the chloride ion traffic in cells. And once we have dysregulation of this uh, chloride and calcium, it leads to microdetachments. And was, as we look across the bottom graphic, on the left side is a normal retina, uh, and in the middle we start to see this dys dysregulation and, and the architecture starts to get manipulated, eventually ending up in a microdetachment at the end. Again, this is a potentially first in class and best in class, no clinical stage competition here for gene therapy. Proof of comp concept was established in a large animal model. Uh, clear path to IND with the IND pre-IND meeting already completed, uh, CMC is in place, and our IND enabling activities are ongoing. So if we look here, um, the proof of concept in this large animal canine model, on the left side we look at the control with BSS, and clearly we see this micro detachment here, and as time goes by we see this get larger. Um, on the gene therapy treated I, we see this micro detachment get resolved, and this, we've, this has been shown out to four years. So in addition to these two programs, we have a series of mini gene programs. Um, I think we all know that AAV is a preferred vector for the eye. Uh, clearly there, there's already a commercially available vector for, from Luxterna. Uh, extensive experience, uh, well-documented safety profile. Um, one of the limitations, or the biggest limitation, is really the, the limited packaging capacity of the vector. Uh, so the solution here, or one of so the solutions, could be engineering AAV amenable genes that still function, encode functionally optimized proteins. So essentially reducing the size of the gene such that it fits in a standard AAV vector. We're, we're working with the University of Massachusetts Medical Center and the Hooray Gene Therapy Center there to uh, work on three different indications, LCA10, or Leber's congenital amaurosis, type 10, um, which is a mutation in the mini SEP2, in the SEP290 gene, uh, Stargardt disease, a mutation in the ABCA4 gene, and Usher syndrome type 2A, or a mutation in the USH2A gene. Again, a significant commercial opportunity, these are larger or orphan diseases. Um, potential for best in class. This is a mutation independent strategy, which is important when there are so many different mutations in this disease. Uh, compelling science, we've shown proof of concept in a mouse model, a uh, very aggressive mouse model. Uh, we converted this option that we had with the University of Massachusetts Medical School uh, to a worldwide exclusive license a few months ago. Uh, this was the initial proof of concept showing here in the middle the retinal thickness um, and once treated with the gene therapy, this may, was maintained uh, as opposed to the, the non-treated or control eye where we see the thinning of the retina. This was also shown in, in functional as well in an ERG. Um, right now, this is just preliminary proof of concept. We're working to optimize the vector and create additional durability. A little bit about uh, ABCA4, which is uh, the cause for Stargardt disease. Uh, Stargardt's the most common inherited macular dystrophy, uh, significant prevalence. It makes a protein that helps clear away waste during the visual cycle. And uh, accumulation of this waste causes uh, byproducts, causing retinal degeneration and vision loss. 
Um, so again, we're working on a mini gene approach as this, this vector is, uh, this gene of interest is, is greater than 7 KB. Um, so we're working to reduce the size of the gene but still have it produce a functional protein. Additionally, work is ongoing with uh, University of Massachusetts on our USH2A program. A similar concept here, uh, a large transgene which we minimize to fit into AAV and uh, this work is currently ongoing. So we plan to have future updates there. Um, our last program is on AAV gene delivery technology. Uh, this is a, a strategic collaboration with Dr. Guangping Gao, and it's a study to Id identify and evaluate various AAV capsids via different routes of delivery. Uh, so I think that's it. Thank you.